Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to Jan and Sue who've logged in. And to those who've not logged in, we welcome you to our Monday morning prayer. And our prayers this morning are special because we're remembering a good man, James, the son of Sister Sue, who's doing his um, accountancy exams this morning in Liverpool. And we want to support James and give him all the oomph that he needs to be calm, to be collect, and that the questions will resonate with his heart. So we wish him good speed and we wish him well. So let us now light our candles for unity and peace. And not only for James, but we remember the 50 victims killed in the gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, in the early hours of yesterday morning. And we pray for the victims, over 51 so far, who have been treated in hospital. We pray for the children of God who are deeply unhappy and who resort to violence. And we remember those who say they love God and love Christ, but yet sit in judgment on another child of God. So we pray today for forgiveness for compassion and for integrity to reign supreme in all our hearts. And our opening prayer from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. You have searched me and you know me, O God. You know when I sit and when I lie down. And that's verse 1 and 2 from Psalm 139. And our opening prayer and thanksgiving this Monday morning Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. May it be a day of blessings, O God, of every gift, a day of new beginnings given. Help us to avoid every sin and the source of every sin to forsake. And as the mist scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from our soul, O oh God. And now for our Monday morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai, we read, We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother and all the great Masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning we commune with the angel of life by saying, angel of life, enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. You now contemplate trees as you feel yourself absorbing vital healing energy forces from the trees and the forests of the Creator's garden. Let us be still for a moment. And just be aware that we are in the cathedral of God, the landscape, God's free gift to each one of us. And when you look around or see what's happening to our beautiful forests in the world through greed, we have a lot to answer for. But we are here because we care. We care about all of God's children, regardless of their colour, their belief or their sexual or gender orientation. We are here not to sit in judgment, but to bring the compassion of Christ, the compassion of Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, God. Our first reading this morning is from Jesus now. So let us just for a moment Allow our hearts to hear these words that were specially chosen for us this morning. God cares about you is the theme. And in the Christian Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25b, we read, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor about your body, what you shall put on. God is a loving God, and God our Father, Mother, does care about you. 
Thus, you need not be over-concerned about your physical needs, the circumstances about you, or the calamities that befall your world may at times press you into a dark corner of depression and deprivation, of hopelessness and despair. But you are the sons and daughters of a new kingdom. You are fed and sustained by the spirit of your father, mother, God within you. Your sufferings will not be greater than they will enable you to endure. Jesus knows, for he has gone before you. And even when his human body was afflicted with suffering and his soul was oppressed, his Father Mother God sent his invisible servants to impart to him the strength to continue in his eternal purposes and the courage to carry out his objectives. As there was for Christ, so there is for you today the joy of knowing that you are in the center of his blessed will and the objects of his everlasting love there are those hours in which human pain sharpens your focus upon those things that are really important for your lives there are those times when the poverty of your lives may be due to your failure to communicate your needs to your Father, Mother, God and to look to them for the answers to your problems. The Father, Mother, God of Jesus, your great God, never sleeps. They are aware of your deepest desires and interests. They want to fulfill them in the manner and to the extent that their purposes will be accomplished in and through you, so that your joy may be full and complete. That is a beautiful reading, and yet many say, oh, I worry about this, and I have lots of friends who worry needlessly, and I have one or two who are what I would call drama queens, where they thrive on drama. They can't live without drama or chaos in their life. And when you speak to them, their television and their radio are on full pelt. They don't hear a word you have to say. And thinking about it, do they have time to listen to their heart? I guess deep down they're lonely. Hence having the music and the radio and the TV on blaring and blasting. But today we have need of God's love. And we need to nurture that love through prayer through silence, maybe through taking a nice walk through the woodlands or finding a safe spot where you can be still in your busy day and allow Christ back into your heart. It's so easy to say, I love God. It's so easy to say, I've handed my life over to Christ and then go and judge another brother or sister as many are doing within the Christian family, as is happening now in the Islamic family between Shiite and Sunni, in the Judaic family between Orthodox and non-Orthodox Jews. But as the great, the great Gandhi said, I like your Christ, but not your Christians, because your Christians are not like your Christ. What is that saying to you today? Well, it's saying to me, try not to judge another by their colour, their creed, or maybe their lifestyle choice or where they live, but to try and see the face of Christ in that person, in their poverty, in their misery, in their failure, in their worries and in their anxieties. And if they choose not to listen, bless them and walk away and have courage to walk away. That is the key, to hand them over to God, who can see the whole picture. We can only see what others present to us. And as you and I both know, there are two sides to a book. There's the front cover and the back cover. 
and many times we fail to let others see into our heart for fear of being wounded again. We are in the presence of Christ now. Christ is our healer. He is our teacher. He is our role model. And he calls you and me today to come to him, to come, to be still, and to invite him back into our hearts. We may have strayed, we may have done things we're ashamed of, but who hasn't? As the great Saint Augustine said, there go I, but for the grace of God. So let us just come to this beautiful place and let us know that we are truly loved, that God loves us and that God cares for us and that we will never be abandoned unless we choose to walk away from God. The choice is ours and it's freely given and it must be freely made. And I dedicate this for James, for you, dear Jan and Sue, who are here with us. Fill my heart unto the fullest. Eat my bread and drink my stay O Christ for you are the living breaths of God in each one of us and now we read from this beautiful little book I say young the words of Jesus for our hearts this morning and I was guided to read the words for June the first not for today I am I am involved in every and each moment of your life. I have carefully mapped out every inch of your journey through this day, even though much of it may feel haphazard. Because the world is in a fallen condition, things always seem to be unraveling around the edges. 
expect to find trouble this day and at the same time trust that my way is perfect even in the midst of such messy imperfections. Stay conscious of me as you go through this day remembering that I never leave your side. Let the Holy Spirit guide you step by step, protecting you from the unnecessary trials and equipping you to get through whatever must be endured. As you trudge through the sludge of this fallen world, keep your mind in heavenly places with me. Thus the light of my presence shines on you, giving you peace and joy that circumstances cannot touch. And we say thank you, Jesus, for those beautiful words, for they mean so much to my heart this morning. We come now to our morning intercessions. O Christ of the poor and the yearning, kindle in my heart within a flame of love for my neighbor, for my foe, for my friend, for my kindred all. From the humblest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all, kindle in my heart within a flame of love. We pray for this coming day and for justice and peace in our heart, in our family, in our village, in our country, in our world. So now, just for a moment, let us be still and let us invite the Christ back home into our heart. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to show us where we may be going wrong, where we seem to attract disaster upon disaster, or go from one crisis into another. Let us be humble and ask the Spirit of God to point us in the right direction, and to name, to bless, and to release the issues to God. And this morning we remember James and we wish him well. And we just say thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for guiding James. And for the, the victims of the awful disaster, the tragedy that occurred in Orlando in Florida. And for the gun lobby, where so many, even young children, have an arsenal of weapons that can kill. We pray for all the innocent victims there today and we pray for the soul of the one who was guilty of it because he was homophobic. And with Jan we hold all gathered here for peace around the world, for all on our healing lists and for the gay community. We pray today for tolerance, and in the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who said, I am not here to judge another. Judgment must be left to God. And when he was challenged about someone living in a gay relationship who was homosexual or lesbian, he said, who am I to judge? My duty of care is to bring the compassion of Christ and not to judge. And if it is right with their conscience, it is right with God. So let us pray for forgiveness to those who sit in judgment on another, who should know better. We pray today for an end to violence, especially the gun lobby in America that funds a lot of the senators in Parliament in Washington to keep the gun lobby alive. We pray that your love, O oh God, and through the power of prayer will expose those who receive funding from the gun lobby and let them eat humble pie for their atrocities and for the blood on their consciences 
of the many innocent lives from young school children to ordinary people who've been shot needlessly. We pray that this gun lobby will be overruled and overturned and brought back to proper control. We pray today for all of you who are here. We pray for Jan and her family. We pray for Sister Sue and her family. We remember Paul and his son, Ben. We remember our brothers and sisters who may be unwell at this time. We pray for Eleanor and Elizabeth, for Miriam, for Elaine, for Nancy and Sue. We pray for the friends of our community, those who support us, for all our friends on LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Mail and Facebook. And we thank God for their love and support. We pray for Brother Paul in California and his community today. So now we remember today Brother Paul and his wife Jackie. We remember Brother Rob and the problems he's developed with his eyes where he's got to be tested yet again. We pray that that will be healed. And I pray for those who are suffering alone today, for those who may be dying, for those who are in pain, for those in our hospitals, care centres and nursing homes, and for the doctors and nurses and paramedics who reach out to them in love. Let us now pray the Lord's Prayer, but it's the prayer from the Anglican Church in New Zealand. It's a beautiful prayer because it incorporates God as Father and Mother. So let us now come to this place of love as we pray. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by all the peoples of the world and your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another forgive us. In times of temptation and test strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forevermore. Amen. <coughs> and now for our closing prayer. This day and this night, may we know, O oh God, the deep peace of the running wave, the deep peace of the flowing air, the deep peace of the quiet earth, the deep peace of the shining stars, the deep peace of the Son of Peace. And now, as we blow out this flame, we blow the healing touch of Christ to each one here and all whom we have prayed for this morning. So go in peace to love and to serve your God. Namaste, shalom, and shalom, paxet bonum. Om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum. And may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken your heart to the I am presence of God within you. Have a beautiful day, dear friends. And for those whose bedtime it is, sleep well. Take care.